So I spent £695 on Twitter for Twitter ads for the launch of my digital product and I'd like to take you behind the scenes and show you what happened and whether Twitter ads or using Twitter ads to promote your digital product is actually worth it. Hello guys, thank you so much for joining me on my video on this channel. I document my journey of starting a digital product business from scratch. So if you are new and you want to see that type of content as well as follow my journey, then I would love if you subscribe to the channel as well as if you're coming back and you're watching my, you have watched my videos before and you're coming back again to continue watching, then thank you so much for joining me. Before I get started, I have two offers for you. One is a business plan. So if you are toying with the idea of starting your own digital product or product based business and you want to know or get a list of things that you should be focusing on so that you don't miss anything and you move forward in the right direction then that business plan is that checklist which will guide you that I've put a link in the description box below. As well as if you are further ahead in your journey, perhaps you already have your digital product, you already have an audience, you have already started building an email list, but you want to know what to say to your subscribers. You want to know um, how to introduce them to your product. Um, then I have uh, two email templates, free email templates for you that you can find. Again, link in the description box below. That makes it easy for you to launch your digital product business through email marketing, as well as you don't have to think about what to say because it's pretty much already written for you. All you need to do is just fill in the blanks. I've made it super simple and straightforward for you to launch your own digital product business through email marketing. So be sure to check the description box below for those two links. Okay, so as I mentioned, I have used Twitter ads to launch my digital product and I'm going to share with you my thoughts on it and whether I actually thought it was worth it. Now, the unfortunate thing is that I did not actually make a profit. I wasn't going into this to actually make a profit, but I wanted to spend the, the money to see whether the strategy that I had come up with would actually work to help me deliver um, product sale. Now I ran the ads for one month and uh, it was just about getting enough data to see what my audience wanted. I would love to take you behind on my Twitter ads dashboard to show you what it looks like and also to break things down and show you what, what my thought process was. So here I am on my Twitter dashboard and uh, I have first filtered the day to, to the period of time when I launched the ads. And I only ran it for one month in the months of July and August. And um, I think it was from the 23rd of July to the 23rd of August. And you can see here the amount of money that was spent as well as the number of impressions that Twitter delivered to me. The ad strategy that I developed was to do a lot of split testing between um, different landing pages as well as the target audience. So if you drill down into this specific ad, ca ca ad campaign and we look at the ads, for example, whilst I am targeting a specific audience, the, the destination for the ads went to two blog posts. So one was a webinar framework blog post and the other was a product launch blog post. And these are the, the blog posts here. So one was more about talking about the, the product launch um strategy and also the webinar launch strategy and each of these blog posts will have its own um templates that i was selling so here's where i recommended the launch with webinar templates and also here is where i recommended the um the launch product launch um email templates so that is what i was doing i was a b testing to see which one people will click on based on the design of the image as well as the copy so if we look at the impressions here um what i pay attention to is the number of impressions delivered and how many clicks was being sent to the specific blog post as well as the click through rate the click through rate isn't that bad but because the cost per link click wasn't too expensive i thought it would have been more over 1 pound or so but because i was getting it for less than 1 pound i even tried to see if i could get it as low as 
50 pence, I didn't mind the click-through rate being so low. Obviously, with a higher click-through rate, then the cost per link click would be much lower. But what I realized about Twitter when compared to Facebook, for example, is that with Facebook, you may have a higher click-through rate, but also a higher cost per click. Whereas with Twitter, you have a low click to read, but if you can manage the, if you are happy with the cost per click, then there's no reason why I sought to to pause that ad because I was getting um, very cheap clicks to my website and that's all that mattered. Once I got the clicks to my website, I then looked to see how the actual blog post was performing. So there were a few indicators that I used on my blog post and these are the two blog posts that were being tested. So you can see I got 465 clicks to the product launch email template and 251. Both of these blog posts were actually visible at the same time in those ads. And the data shows that a lot more people actually visited the product launch email blog post, um, but the number of people that actually clicked on the, the call to action button to get those templates was six people for the webinar um, templates and four people for the email template. So the email conversion rate in terms of how many people clicked on the call to action button was 1% versus 2%. So you could say from the data here that a lot more people actually wanted the webinar templates, but it's interesting to note that even fewer people wanted the product launch email templates. Um, two people actually ended up purchasing the product launch email templates. Well, if you're not a data junkie, you're probably wondering, what does all of that mean? So here is a breakdown of the, of the conclusion of the Twitter ads campaign. So I got 716 people to visit my blog post, which in the time that I spent promoting the ads, I probably would not have been able to get that through organic means, given that I have very few followers on Twitter, as well as if I were to use my other channels, for example, like Pinterest or Instagram, um, I probably wouldn't have gotten nowhere as close as the number of people to visit my blog post. I also tracked a few elements on my blog, which is the number of people that clicked on the call to action button. And the reason I did that just was to see whether the blog post was engaging enough to encourage people to check out the product. And 10 people clicked on that blog post. So that would give a click through rate of about 1.36%. So the click through rate is taking the number of people that uh, took the action of clicking on the on the button versus the number of people that visited my blog post and then taking a percentage of that. Um, I usually like to see a click-through rate of anything that's more than 1%. 1.39 is okay, but it could have been improved, obviously, because with more click-through rates, then you know that people are more likely to want the product. I also got two sales of the product, which is a sales conversion rate of 0.27%, which is just looking at the number of people that purchased the product versus the number of people that actually landed on the blog post. And then lastly, I got uh, um, an increase in my Twitter followers. I didn't actually realize that people were following me as a result of um, the ads, but when I checked that, I was like, hmm, I'm actually getting some followers because of the ads. So all in all, you might say that running the ads for the purpose of getting that data to understand what the audience wanted um, was worth it, especially since I would not have been able to do that by myself through free traffic methods. So in that regard, it was worth it, but maybe the strategy that I used could have been better. Now, there are many strategies that you can use to sell a product. You can send traffic directly to a sales page, or you can send traffic directly to a blog post, which recommends the product, which is what I did, as well as you could generate leads. So you send traffic to a landing page with the purpose of capturing lead data and then taking them along an email funnel journey. For me, it wasn't all about uh, becoming profitable quickly. Of course, that would have been a bonus if I got sales. I did actually get two sales, so it did make me realize that people wanted the product, but probably it's not enough data to come to that conclusion just yet. But 
It's also about gathering data because I'm in that fact finding stage to really understand what my audience wants and how they are likely to convert based on the different tactics that I might, might use in this launch. But I would say that based on everything that has happened, it probably wasn't the best strategy to start with. I think what I am going to do next is to more use the lead generation strategy and why I would want to do that is because I would be building an email list, getting data from people. So that would be their name and email. Plus I'm, I'm able to follow up in the background. I'm able to continue that conversation with them over a period of time. So they get to build, um, build that familiar familiarity with me. Now using the, traffic to blog post strategy, there was no way for me to capture people's data. Of course, I could have added the, the pixel, the Twitter pixel, and then do retargeting, but then that would also involve spending additional money to retarget those visitors who came to my blog post. Whereas if I were to use lead generation from the start, I already would have captured their data. I would have, that data would then belong to myself. So then I could continue retargeting them through email, which would have been free. So how am I going to execute this lead gen strategy? Well, I already have my landing page. I know what my lead magnet is and I already have my email sequences set up. So I will be driving traffic to that lead capture page. I will probably give it about a month of running traffic again to see how it converts and I will report back then to let you know what the results are. Now you might be asking, is there any specific or one ad platform that I would recommend that you use. Now, some people seem to think, or at least I'm not quite sure whether Facebook ads continues to be the holy grail of uh, advertising, but at one point, a lot of people seem to put a lot of emphasis on using Facebook ads. But what I have realized over time is that uh, as long as you know where your audience is, because that's really all it is, right? You need to know where is your audience showing up? So where can you show up as well? And that could be Facebook, it could be Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. You need to have an idea of where that audience is, but the best method really for figuring that out is to put a little bit of money into each platform and test all of those platforms. So for example, you may decide, okay, I'm going to test four platforms. That is Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest put a little bit of money into each one and see which one gives you traction, which one converts quicker, which one is the cheapest to run the ads on, and then pick that one platform and focus on it. So that's all guys. If you want more digital product tips and also to follow me along on my digital product journey as I launch and build a digital product business from scratch, then please do come along with me by subscribing to this channel where I produce content every week and I will look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye guys.